All right, how's it going, y'all? Today I'm gonna to be addressing one of the most common requests for a tutorial that I get that I just am not going to do. And that is how to set up a mail server on a Synology or on just about anything. I mean, technically you can set up a mail server on any Linux box on Synology and it's all very easy to set up, except for one thing. There is a really good chance that your emails are not going to get delivered. So like a lot of things, especially when it comes to security, a small group of people who are abusing the system kind of ruined it for everybody. And I'm talking about spam email. Email is a protocol on the internet where anybody can send anybody anything with almost no computing power. Well, this is great because it's an open standard and it allows anybody to create their own mail servers. And it means that there's not one giant who claims everything. Where it's bad is the fact that only a couple of bad apples basically ruined it for everybody. And those are people who realize that, hey, I can spend literally hundreds of thousands, millions of emails in a day, all on a really cheap server, to thousands and thousands of people trying to get them to buy one product. All I have to do is get one or two people to click on it, and I've paid my bills that day. And so literally the click-through rate can be 0.0001%, but it'll still be profitable because it is so cheap to run an email server. And so that's what people were doing. They were sending these massive spam emails and I'm sure you still get them in your inbox. And they were just clogging down mail servers and clogging up people's inboxes. And so because of that, email has kind of become a closed off system slightly. No longer can you just go ahead and set up your own mail server and start sending emails. Well, you can, it's just those will not get delivered. All the major providers and basically anybody who runs an email server knows the first thing you set up is a blocking list. And it's blocked based off of a lot of different things. That's why some emails get sent to spam even though they shouldn't be. Mail servers get so many emails that they look for certain things and if it's not perfect, they'll send it to spam. And in a lot of cases, especially with Gmail or something, they've stopped even sending it to spam. They've stopped even saying it's delivered at all. Instead, if you don't have a few things perfectly correct, they're just not going to deliver it whatsoever and the end user will never receive it. And so really this is why I do not recommend anybody really self-host their own email server unless you are really paying for a business plan and you can have your ISP set some things up. And the first and by far most important that most home users just are not gonna have access to is having their ISP set up their IP address with a reverse DNS lookup. So what reverse DNS is, is it's the reverse of DNS. So DNS associates a domain name with an IP address. Reverse DNS does the opposite. It associates an IP address with a domain name. And so because it's based off the IP address, your public IP address, unless you have a static public IP address from your ISP and they allow for a reverse DNS lookup, you're just not going to be able to set this up. If you do have a business line, what you can actually have your ISP do is basically have your static IP address directly associated with a DNS record. What that means is your IP address, if you do a reverse lookup on it, will actually point to your domain name that you plan on emailing from. And this is the first step that every single mail spam filter does, is it checks the reverse DNS. It says, okay, it came from this IP address. Is that IP address properly associated with that domain name? And for people who are just setting up mail servers left and right, it is not going to be the case, and therefore it's going to get kicked out as spam immediately, essentially. Now, while this is by far the most important and is probably going to be the hardest thing to set up, the next thing you also need to do is probably DKIM authentication. So what this is, is essentially kind of like encryption where it says, hey, this host name says that this key is valid. Therefore, this email that was sent has that same signature and therefore was not messed with and was successfully delivered without being spoofed or anything. Now what this does is it prevents people who do not own your domain, aka people who should not be sending email on your behalf, from sending email on your behalf. This is really important because you need to make sure that when an email comes from at Bank of America, you know it actually comes from them. What this does is it validates that, hey, Bank of America actually did send you that, rather than some guy who set up a fake email address coming from Bank of America when it did not actually come from there. And so that's a really important thing also to set up. And those two things, reverse DNS and DKIM, just makes it so much harder for home users or any small businesses to really get into email hosting because quite frankly, you don't know when your emails aren't delivered. It is way too common, especially if you're running a business, that, oh shoot, I didn't update this proper thing to have proper spam filtering. Now, seven people who I emailed 
They didn't email me back because the email was sent to spam. And so because email is so important for business, I really do not recommend hosting your own mail server. Now there are ways to do it properly. What you can do, and I'm planning on doing a tutorial on this, is not use your own mail server to send email. Instead, use your mail server to receive your email. Then when you're sending it, use something like Amazon SES to send it. Amazon SES has a very good policy and makes sure that nobody's spamming on their services. Therefore, it's all set up for you and your mail will almost certainly be delivered because they do all of the email verification and making sure it gets through spam filters on their end. That way, you make sure all your emails are delivered while also being able to host it at home. But for people who really want to set up their own mail server because they want privacy, this breaks that because quite frankly, it is still going through Amazon. Technically, they could see everything you were doing on there if they chose to. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. This is really why when people ask me to make a video on setting up their own mail server, I really just cannot recommend it because email is just too important to have it break down. All right, well, that's going to be it for this. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below other than how to set up a mail server and have a good one. Bye.